Hello and welcome to another Overlord Lore and Fury video. And today we will take a closer look at Godkins. And although I will focus on Zeshia and the Captain of the Black Scripture, this is also a video about Godkins in general. And we will start at the beginning and answer a rather obvious question. What precisely are Godkins? Well, Godkins are beings who descended from a player. And as such, they are a relatively new addition to the new world. Since the earliest documented player appearance occurred roughly 600 years before Nazarick. And as a mix between players and common new worlders, Godkins will, in general, be quite a bit stronger than even the strongest regular denizens of the new world. But they will most likely remain inferior to the players who founded their bloodline. And in the case of the slain theocracy, they are also seen as demigods. And as such, maintaining their bloodline is of the highest priority to the government, since these two are basically a living gift from their gods. Furthermore, while the godkins of the theocracy are of players' descent, there's also the possibility that somewhere in the new world, guild NPCs also fathered children, and they might also have the same powers as a godkin. And I'm sure that Demiurge will eventually come to an answer, whether or not it is possible for a normal NPC to father children with a new worlder, and whether or not the offspring will inherit a fraction of their powers and abilities. By the way, this is also one of the few areas where Demiurge and Sebastian might actually cooperate. But while I'm speaking of power and ancestry, we have no precise idea how the transfer of power from one generation to the next occurs. But maybe it's just good old biology. And here things are getting rather interesting, because when a god can procreate with a common new world denizen, there might be a chance that the offspring will also be a godkin, which is most likely the way the slain theocracy preserves the godkin lineage. But by that logic, it would also be possible for two godkins to produce offspring with the same potential as a player. And of course, they would also be able to produce a normal godkin, and they would also, and this is probably the worst case, father or mother a normal new world denizen without any player blood inside them. And the fact that a male godkin will be married to multiple women kinda supports this theory since it indicates that not every child will awaken his power. So therefore the godkin in question will have to father multiple children, at least until one of them has shown godkin-like powers. And therefore let's take a closer look at the procreation process. So this is the most basic of examples, and yes, there are way, way more complicated methods of showcasing the results of intercourse while also skipping the fun bits. But again, I will limit myself here for the sake of sim sim bleh, simplicity. So let's turn our attention on the first picture. We see a godkin, represented as GK, and a commoner, represented as KK. And with a chance of 25%, the offspring will also be a godkin, since only one partner is bearer of the godkin gene, if it's even a gene. And here is example number two, and this is the far more interesting one. Two godkins mating with another. And therefore the offspring will not only be twice as likely to be a godkin, but with a 25% chance, these two godkin genes will be united in a single individual, which in theory would grant the kid the same potential as a player. And while this child will most likely be born as a level 1 baby, it should, at least theoretically, be able to reach level 100 and do everything else a normal player character is able to do. Then of course there's also a 25% risk of producing another climb. But hey, that's a sacrifice one should be willing to make. So anyway, I pretty much created the most boring sex team talk in the history of anime, just to illustrate how important the question of how the power of a player is passed on truly is. Furthermore, we also don't know what precisely awakening means, 
Only that, according to Evil Eye, a god can may potentially awaken awesome powers. It could, for example, mean that at a certain point the god can will be blessed with incredible power, without any effort necessary on their part. It could also mean that all player offspring have a chance to be born with a fraction of the power of their ancestors, and that this power might even skip a generation or two. Or it could mean that some or even any offspring from players and any offspring from godkins can awaken their powers by just training enough, because these traits once inherited from a player will be passed on to some or even all of the offspring. This would imply that for example Climb would have been able to easily gain levels if he was born a godkin instead of a... Climb. And that he might at this point be level 30, 40 or even 50 thanks to his intense training, while on the other hand a poor and malnourished peasant with God's blood inside them will likely never acquire the levels necessary to discover that they have player blood in their veins and are something special. And if you ask me which of these scenarios would be my personal favorite, it would be good old genetics where two godkins are able to produce a being that, while never transported to the new world, is essentially a natural-born player of the new world. This also has so much potential for future conflict inside Nazarick, since Demiurge because Happy Farm would eventually mention this possibility and thereby sending Ainz into even more paranoia. But regardless of the way of how these powers are passed on to the next generation, these potent abilities and their combat strength might serve as an identification of godkins. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that anyone who is strong automatically is of player descendants, but they are likely candidates for being godkins, whether or not they know about it, simply because they are so strong. For example, a possible godkin is the Elf King, since he was able to abduct the at that time strongest godkin of the theocracy, Zeshi's mother, which would also imply that Zeshi is the potential equal of a player character, though I believe her strength stems from the fact that she is a godkin with a prolonged lifespan and therefore enough time to level up. And of course Zeshi, the overlord of the new world and the captain of the black scripture are confirmed godkins. Luisenberg Alberion, the leader of Red Drop, the other adamantite adventurer team in Rear's Dice, is also a possible candidate for a godkin, or even a player, due to the legendary armor, which seemingly is of Yggdrasil origin. Khajiit also revealed that there are three members of Zurenorn who would be able to beat Clementine, so maybe one, two, or even all three of them are godkins gone rogue, since Zurenorn has its roots in the theocracy. So therefore the possibility exists that they might be led by at least one rogue godkin, which would be very cool. The Goblin King and the Minotaur Sage might also have sired a godkin or two, especially the Goblin King is a candidate for this scenario, since he's said to have traveled with a human female, and maybe he was able to crossbreed between races thanks to an item known as Wish Upon a Star. And Sebas together with Tsuare might also produce a godkin, since Sebas is a dragonoid and dragonlords are already confirmed of having fathered offspring with a human. The royal bloodline of the dragon kingdom is the living proof of this. But again, there's no guarantee for it. Unless Demiurge aids them. Also, the evil spirits could have produced heteromorph godkins which would be quite interesting. And while the two human players of the 13 heroes might have taken new world partners, I doubt that Platinum Dragonlord would just ignore a rogue godkin, especially one from the player he actually liked. In my opinion, Platinum Dragonlord would act as a godfather for the kid, like Sirius Black did for Harry once he was set free. And since we don't know much about Platinum, we will have to wait and see if somebody of interest is mentioned by him or Rigrid. And by the way, Platinum Dragonlord being a godfather to a godkin would make it that much more awesome if Ainz kills Platinum with an insta-death spell. And while the eight kings of Everest had certainly time, I believe that it is highly unlikely that any of their offspring have survived the devastating civil war. 
and Platinum Dragonlord, who would most likely hunt them down and probably aid them simply to avoid resurrection. But again, we don't know for sure that there are no survivors. After all, the continent is quite big and there is always the possibility that some of them have survived. And this was the first part of my Godkin series and in the second one we will take a closer look at the Godkins themselves and how their powers affect them and their surrounding. Until then, have a nice day, thanks for watching, over and out.